Game Ranks presents 10 Elder Scrolls Oblivion facts that you probably didn't know. This is one of the best Elder Scrolls games ever, and there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started off with number 10. Oblivion has over a thousand characters in the game, but only 13 voice actors. That sounds like a crazy fact, right? Well, if you've played the game, you've probably noticed this. Because, I mean, even still, 13 voice actors, honestly, it feels like four or five. You know, every guard sounds like every second shopkeeper who sounds like every other side quest character. I can really go on and on with this. You know what I'm talking about. That being said, Patrick Stewart and Sean Bean are in the game, so they might as well count as more than one voice just because they're so awesome. I don't know why the Septims got so much better treatment with the voice acting department, but I guess it's because of royalty? I don't know. Maybe you could have thrown Patrick Stewart a couple extra bucks? so we could record some voiceover as maybe like a random blacksmith or two? Could you imagine that? Can the world of Tamriel really handle multiple Sean Beans or multiple Patrick Stewarts running around? I don't know. And with number nine, speaking of the limited voice actors, the arena announcer in Oblivion is actually the announcer for the Washington Capitals NHL team. I think that's pretty cool, and it's also not really a bullshit fact because the Capitals are actually a decent NHL hockey team. Not only is he the arena announcer, but he's also the voice of Shagaroth. So, I mean, that's really cool. And at number 8, Limbo of the Lost was a 2007 game that plagiarized whole set pieces from a bunch of games like Thief, Diablo, and you guessed it, Oblivion. This is like offensively bad, like it just copied straight up. Look at these images. They took whole interiors from shops and dungeons mainly around the Imperial City section, and it's just so blatant. They didn't even try. Like what what were they thinking? I mean, thankfully Limbo of the Lost was basically a garbage game that nobody ended up caring about. But it's crazy that even in 2007, a game was being made by ripping off assets and trying to get sold on the market. And at number 7, in the official trailer for The Elder Scrolls Red Guard, as the camera pans around over like this cinematic bookshelf, you see a bunch of books and they all have The Elder Scrolls name on it. And then there's another one that says The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. This is just about 8 years before the game actually came out. If that's Bethesda thinking ahead, that's pretty insane. That's good on them. Do you think that's a coincidence or not? Let's talk about it in the comments. And at number 6, here's a fact that I really got a kick out of, the Horse Armor DLC, you know, the first real downloadable DLC that it was kind of offensive and stupid add-on content, and it kind of ended up just being a huge joke in the video game industry, was actually still being purchased frequently up to 7 years after its release. Bethesda's VP at the time, Pete Hines, admitted this and was completely surprised, probably as much as I am. What the hell? I guess there was just a huge demand for Horse Armor and no one really realized. Good on Bethesda for capturing that elusive Horse Armor market. And at number 5, the PSP had its own version of The Elder Scrolls Oblivion developed. This game was scheduled for 2007, but unfortunately it was cancelled. It was going to be titled Oblivion, but it was really just for marketing purposes, as it was supposedly an Elder Scrolls travel-style mobile game. These are more just simplistic dungeon-style romps with maybe a few outdoor areas. And honestly, I'm kind of glad that this was cancelled because it probably would have just been a massive disappointment for people, especially in the store. You see a mobile version of Oblivion, you pick it up hoping it's the same thing on your PSP. When it turns out it's just a half-assed clone and it's nothing like the Oblivion that you imagined, it'd be really disappointing, so I'm glad we never had to deal with that. That being said, I could see a version of an Elder Scrolls game do pretty well on Vita, but then again, nobody's really developing for Vita. And at number 4, Jeremy Soule was the composer for the Oblivion musical score. He was inspired to write the music for Oblivion that reflects the beauty of life after being involved in a car crash which he was lucky to survive. Apparently he was driving on the Pacific Coast Highway, his car hydroplaned and spun into oncoming traffic, flipping over multiple times. Jeremy said in an interview that, I knew if I died that night, I felt satisfied with the direction I was going with in my life. That was odd because being a perfectionist, I'm never satisfied. And this experience led him to create some of the most beautiful open world RPG music I've ever heard. I honestly still think Oblivion is up there with the best Elder Scrolls music, maybe tied with Morrowind. And I hate to say it, but maybe if it wasn't for that life-changing experience, Jeremy wouldn't have created such beautiful music that we're all so fortunate to have today. My sad life, I guess, can kind of relate to this. Okay, one, one time I dropped a bowl of soup on the ground, and the result kind of looked like Nathan Drake's face. So I took a picture of it and put it on Instagram. Boom! There we go! My life's work inspired by a traumatic event. God, I'm sorry. And at number three, North Korea actually used the Oblivion theme in a propaganda video, and it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. This video was released by the North Korean government in 2013 with the quotes over fire. As a result, North Korea's high-level nuclear test conducted against American imperialist invaders is a nuclear deterrent that protects our sovereignty. It's just as epic and ridiculous and amazing as it sounds. <laughs> I seriously don't think it gets any better than this, guys. 
At number two, in Skyrim, you can actually find Romlin Dreth, the descendant of Valen Dreth, the prisoner that you meet in Oblivion. Valen Dreth has the privilege of being the first person you see in Oblivion. He's the Dunmer prisoner in the cell opposite yours who just talks a bunch of shit. Later on in the game, if you join the Dark Brotherhood, you can get revenge on him. You can find his descendant Romlin Dreth in Skyrim, working for the Black Briar Meadery. I love when Bethesda goes out of its way to tie these games together with little references and nods, such as the Dreths and even Maik the Liar. It's just cool little stuff like that that makes these games really special. And at number one, since we've already been talking about some foreshadowing, the plot for Oblivion was actually foreshadowed in Morrowind's awesome Tribunal expansion. In Tribunal with some dialogue with Enno Romari, he mentions and talks about the opening gates of Oblivion coming soon. We realize that the end of the era will bring many changes. We believe that the gates of Oblivion will open and the multitude of Daedra will roam this world freely. Some might tell you that this is a good thing, that we are descended from the Daedra and it will be a return to the natural order of things. I know differently though. The coming age will be a time of great horror. Boom, nailed it. That's the basic plot for Oblivion. Good job. Now the coolest part is that they also did this in Oblivion for Skyrim. If you talk to a blade after one of the main quest, they will mention how they will have to bide their time until the next Dragonborn arises. That is a super small reference, but just so cool. It just works out perfectly. Who knows, but when we play the next Elder Scrolls game, maybe we'll find a reference of it in Skyrim. So guys, those are 10 Elder Scrolls Oblivion facts that you probably didn't know. We are huge fans of this game and we know you probably are too. So let us know in the comments if you have any fun facts to share as well. And let us know some of your favorite or secret things about Oblivion. Let's talk. If you had a good time with this video and you want to see more Elder Scrolls videos, click the like button to help us out. And subscribing if you're new is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.